The Magical Tree, a children's book inspired by Gustav Klimt. Shelly turned around. Everything was fine. No one had followed him. In the few strides, he climbed up the stairs, which led to the tree house, high above. No one could know that he was going to visit Manoa, or else he would get in trouble. In the village, people said all sorts of nonsense. To some, Manoa was just a crazy old woman who spoke to trees. But to others, to the majority, she was a witch. Charlie preferred to let them talk and keep his secret. Manoa was sitting in the center of her treehouse. She greeted Jolly with solemnity. Today, my boy, I have chosen the box. I believe that you are ready. Usually, Jolly would pick out a book, a box randomly, among the colorful ones that covered the walls of the treehouse. He would extract a seed from it, hand it to Manoa, and the woman would begin her story. She would speak of the country from which the seed had come, draw the tree that had produced it, and explain the virtues of the tree's fruit. But on this particular morning, Manoa herself handed him a box. It was white, a little bigger than the others, and Jolie had never seen it before. Take it and open it, Jolie. Manoa's voice trembled with emotion. Inside the box, there was a seed as big as a fist and as shiny as gold. How beautiful it is, cried Jolly. Where did it come from? This seed is a mystery. I found it in the desert, but its tree cannot be found anywhere. The tree exists only in this one and unique seed. Why have you not planted it then? asked Jolie, intrigued. As long as the tree is in the seed, it is safe from harm. But as soon as it sprouts, it will become vulnerable. This seed is precious and must be protected. I am too old now. Take it, it's yours. Now you will be the guardian of the unique tree. Year after year, Jolie looked after the seed as though it was the most precious of treasures. He knew the old lady had spoken the truth. It was certainly easier to look after a seed than after a whole tree. But the day to plant the seed was coming and Jolie had to prepare. He tamed a falcon and trained it to haunt the animals that would come close to the tree. When the bird was ready, Jolie began a journey to find his seed a home. He moved away from his village and went beyond the mountains. He felt the unique tree should be protected from the curiosity of people. After long weeks of walking, Jolie arrived in an isolated valley crossed by a small stream. It was a perfect spot. Jolie knelt down and began digging slowly in the ground. He was thinking of Manoa, whose time on earth had ended. He would be worthy of her trust. His hands shaking, Jolie placed the seed in the ground, gently covered it, and then nourished it with clear water from the stream. From this moment on, the man and the falcon would look after the precious seed night and day. The tree grew in an extraordinary manner. After a few weeks, a large and solid trunk appeared. Then a single branch grew out of the trunk, a very long branch from which sprouted many delicate spiraling branchlets. After seven years and seven branches, the tree stopped growing. Then its first fruit appeared. It was black and white and it looked like an eye. When the fruit seemed ripe, Jolie picked it. He opened it carefully to look for a seed. But in this type of fruit, he could find neither seed nor core, only flesh, which was juicy and fragrant. The guardian of the tree hesitated and then took the fruit to his mouth. The flavor was exquisite, incomparable. That night, Jolly ate nothing else and fell into a deep, deep sleep. 
Just before dawn, Jali woke up with a start. Had he been dreaming? He rubbed his eyes to cast aside the dreams of the night, but terrible images clung to his eyelids. At first, there was a tree on fire illuminating the night. Then a river swallowed up the city and the palace of Genhar, its black waters carrying corpses among the debris. But there was also a face, a wonderful face of a princess, beautiful but lifeless. Jali petted the falcon and tried to forget these dark visions, but the face of the woman remained etched in his mind. The next night, a violent storm awoke Jali. With a great crash, lightning struck an oak tree below. When he saw the tree catch fire, Jali felt astounded. This was the same one he saw in his dream. Jali was amazed, and he now understood his own tree's secret. The first fruit of the unique tree allowed you to see across time. Jali had dreamed the future. He then thought of a palace of Genhar drowning in the Black River. He must warn King Argo and prevent the disaster. So Jali had his falcon carry a message directly to the king. Only the bird could make it there in time. King Argo greeted the falcon with curiosity and read the message carefully. A strange man, probably a madman, had predicted that all of Genhar would soon drown. But Argo was a wise ruler. For the sake of prudence, he sent guards to inspect the river. They returned urgently to raise the alarm. The dike was about to collapse. All the men in Genhar worked together to keep the river behind its dikes. Thanks to their efforts and to the mysterious messenger, the city was saved. The king now knew that the falcon's master was no madman. But who was he? Argo wanted to find out. He summoned his daughter, the Princess Naja, to come close to him and entrusted her with a mission. I want to meet the man who saved our city. His falcon will bring you to him. He claims to see the future, but I cannot believe in such a miracle. You will leave at dawn with your servant, but you will go on foot while your servant will ride your horse. If this man truly possesses some kind of power, if he is no imposter, he will know who you are. Then and only then will you be able to show him the gratitude of King Argo and his people. At the foot of the tree, Jali eagerly awaited his falcon's return. When he finally spotted the bird, he noticed it was followed by two women. The first rode a white horse and carried wealthy ornaments of gold. The second came barefoot, her hair blowing in the wind, and it was she who made Jali's heart leap. The princess had survived. She was even more beautiful than in his dream. Jali fell down on his knees in front of her. In silence, he thanked the tree and its fruits for saving her life. Look at me, said the woman. Jali lifted his head. Naja smiled. So it seems after all that you are not a liar. You can truly see what others do not. She leaned down toward Shali, raised him up, and held him in her arms. <laughs>